We present a didactic video describing the poor placement and management of the robotic system during total colectomy or total coloprotectomy for cancer. A carefully planned poor placement and a standardized technique are essential for total colectomy to avoid a clash of the robotic arms and to reduce the risk of surgical complications. Our approach for robotic total colectomy, the same ports are used for the dissection of the right and the left part of the colon with two main dockings. Surgery is planned clockwise from the right to the left without moving the patient car. Four robotic ports are positioned on an oblique line across the umbilicus from the right iliac fossa to the left hypochondriac region. All of them are height millimeter ports except for a 12 millimeter port available for the robotic stapler inserted in the right iliac fossa at the future side of specimen extraction incision. Two additional height millimeter ports, one in the right and one in the left flank, are positioned for the assistant. The left one can also be used for pelvic exposure with a robotic forceps when a low rectal dissection is required. Surgery is planned clockwise from the right to the left with a first docking toward the right colon and a first targeting pointing the hepatic flexure. After completing the immobilization of the right colon, the ligation section of the right mesocolic vessels and the detachment of the hepatic flexure, the dissection is carried as far as possible toward the right and the left part of the transverse colon. During the dissection of the right and the transverse colon, the camera can be inserted alternatively through the right and the left paraumbilical port. This maneuver allows surgeon to operate first with two left hands for the dissection of the ascending colon and the right mesocolic vessels with the robotic forceps coming from the bottom right. Then, the operation is carried out with two right hands to facilitate the ligation of the middle colic vessels and the dissection of the transverse colon as far as possible on the left. A second docking is subsequently performed after rotating the robotic boom without moving the patient car. A first targeting pointing the left colon allows surgeon to completely detach the splenic flexure and to complete the dissection of the descending and sigmoid colon onto the superior part of the rectum. In case of associated protectomy, a third targeting can be done toward the pelvis. In this case, the fourth robotic arm is replaced on the left flank port. Two assistant ports are then available to help the surgeon and facilitate the pelvic exposure and the rectal dissection. Our approach for total colectomy is presented in this surgical film. We present the clinical case of a 44-year-old man diagnosed with a sigmoid adenocarcinoma revealing an inherited Lynch syndrome. The patient was positioned in the supine position, both arms tucked alongside with legs apart. The robotic cart was then driven and docked on the left side of the patient. The surgical assistant was on the left side for the first part of the intervention. The robotic arms were automatically deployed. The robotic boom was correctly positioned using the laser crosshairs pointed to the camera port. The camera arm was docked and a zero degree endoscope was inserted and targeted toward the hepatic flexure. The auto-targeting feature was activated identifying optimal arm placement. The remaining arms were subsequently docked and the instruments were inserted under direct vision. After placing the cecum on tension, surgical dissection began with the vascular dissection. The ileocolic vessels were identified, lifted up, and carefully dissected. The ileocolic vein and artery were isolated and ligated with clips and then transected. A sharp dissection of the posterior visceral fascial layer from the garotas fascia was performed in a medial to lateral fashion. Two left hands conformation was first used. Exposition was eased by a double fenestrated robotic grasper inserted through the robotic arm 1 to retract anatomical structure. The detachment of the told fascia was completed taking down lateral attachment. The mesocolon was completely detached above the duodenum and the pancreas head. The right mesocolon was entirely detached and the hepatic flexure was mobilized. The gastrocolic ligament was detached from the transfer colon to open the lesser side. The superior right colic vein was subsequently identified and ligated. Dissection was carried on as far as possible toward the transverse mesocolon. The middle colic vessels were dissected and transected. In difficult cases, the camera can be replaced through the right paraumbilical cord and a two left hands conformation allows a better vision on the left part of the transverse colon.
At this moment, a second docking toward the left was achieved after rotating the surgical boom by 180 degrees. The camera arm was inserted and pointed toward the left colon, the surgical assistant moving on the right side of the patient. The mesocolon was detached from the duodenojejunal junction. After opening the peritoneum, the mesenteric inferior vein was subsequently ligated and transected. The mesenteric artery was divided 2 cm after its root on the aorta to preserve the superior hypogastric plexus. The left colon and mesocolon was entirely separated from the garota's fascia. The detachment of the left told fascia was completed in a medial to lateral fashion. The lateral attachments were taken down and the splenic flexure was mobilized. The sigmoid colon was also mobilized. The right uterer and the gonadic vessels were respected. The upper part of the mesorectum was dissected up to the rectal wall. A 60 mm linear robotic stapler was inserted through the 12 mm port in the right iliac fossa. The rectum was then transected with the robotic stapler. The specimen was extracted via a small incision on the right iliac port after dividing the terminal ileum. A transsutural ileorectal anastomosis was carefully performed. The mesenteric defect was closed to avoid the development of an internal hernia. Post-operative outcome was favorable with no significant post-morbidity. Hospital discharge was obtained on the fourth post-operative day. Final pathological exam revealed a DMMR sigmoid adenocarcinoma, staged PT3N1B. Two among the 72 lymph nodes retrieved in the specimen were positive. In conclusion, an adequate port placement and a standardized approach for total colectomy is mandatory to decrease operative time and surgical complications.